Hi there, and welcome to our first tutorial for the Mechanism Design Project uh, for Second Year Design. Today we're going to be showing you how to create a pendulum model using Simulink. This will be the first model of three uh, tutorials that we'll be giving on how to use Simulink. From these you'll be able to have enough information to be able to develop your actual mechanism model for the car convertible roof. So if we go to MATLAB and um, the resulting model that we're going to create, this on the right here is the Simulink model of a pendulum and this is what we're going to be creating today. On the left here is a video of the output that we get from Simulink and if we click play this is what we're going to get is the motion of a pendulum swinging back and forth over time. So to do this we need to first create a new Simulink model in uh, MATLAB. So when MATLAB loads up, all you need to do to actually enable Simulink or open a new Simulink model is to type smnew in the command window. We double click, uh, we enter that, we create a new Simulink window and that is our create our fresh new model. What you could also have, what also need is to download the mechanism blocks templates from Moodle. So that's on the Moodle design website. website. All you have to do is download, download that and put that in your MATLAB folder. If we opened the mechanism blocks, what we have are a set of blocks that we're going to be using to create the models. These should be all the blocks you'll need to create the free tutorial models and your mechanism model for your design exercise. Okay, so Simulink has loads of different models, for all, uh, little blocks for all sorts of models that you can create. But uh, to simplify the process, we've just given you the blocks that you'll need for this project. So we'll be using that to form our pendulum model today. So first things to do is to actually start with just setting up some default uh, settings in our um, Simulink space. So the first thing we're going to do is actually use the Y uh, axis as our reference point for gravity. Okay, We're going to have Y pointing upwards. And to change this, we need to go into the mechanism configuration. Okay, So we just double click mechanism configuration. And what we have normally as default is the Z direction as the reference for gravity. What we want to do is just highlight that, copy that, place that back to zero and put it in the uh, Y vector. Okay, and we just have to click apply and we can OK that. And now we have gravity acting in our Y direction. Another couple of things that are really nice to do uh, always is to go to uh, display and untick hide automatic names. This means we actually get all the names in our model. So it's really easy to see what, what's happening when we're developing our model. And for our case, we just need to actually remove all these elements because we won't be using those in our model today. And we'll just keep this solid because that solid will represent our two kilogram sphere on the end of a massless beam. And that's what we're creating. The, before we start creating the actual geometry, we just need to set up another bit of uh, the simulation. And that is just the solver that we're going to use to um, solve for the solution in our throughout time. What we can do is go into simulation, model configuration parameters, and this represents all the configurations uh, parameters for our solver to run through time and give us all the positions and accelerations and velocities of all our joints as, the me as our mechanisms move. So they normally start off with a variable time step and it will automatically try and get, uh, provide a solver. But as you probably know aware from your first year notes, what we can do actually in solve this type of mechanism, we can actually use a fixed time step and use our rung and cutter method um, to solve for these uh, linear systems. So we've got a start time and a stop time of 10 seconds. So that's how long our simulation will run. We've selected a fixed time step and we've selected the running cutter solver. Now what we can do is actually set the time step, the increment uh, through time that the running cutter will do. 
And what we can do is actually from auto, we'll set that to 0.01 seconds. If we click apply and OK. That, will, that sets up all our mechanism configuration uh, for our projects. So you won't need to be able to do anything beyond changing that simulation configuration and the direction of gravity for our uh, models. So now it's a case of actually creating the geometry and putting it in the right position so when we run through time it actually then performs the swing. So to start off we'll create the sphere and we'll use this solid that was already in our model. All we have to do is double click this and we can actually change its parameters. If we look at it we've got the geometry which is uh, can represent the actual item or we use it as just a representation. So here we're just going to use it as a uh, representation of our mass. We're going to select it as a sphere and we'll give it a diameter of a uh, radius of two centimeters. To then give it a mass we can then look at using the inertia tab. So we click on inertia and we can see that you can either calculate it from the geometry or we can select point mass and give it a mass that we actually uh, desire at that point. So here we're going to have it as a two kilo, uh, kilogram mass and we can click apply. And then if we click OK, we have now updated that um, sphere in our space. What we can always do is actually edit the titles of these blocks so we know what they represent in our models. So we just have to do point mass, two kilograms, and that's for us just as a reference point. Now we've just got a mass that has no reference to our world frame, so it's just existing in space. We have no idea where it actually is positioned in our space. And what we want to do is actually attach it to a massless beam, and our massless beam is going to be attached to our origin in the world frame. So if I just double click here, you can see that actually our massless beam is connected to the origin. So to do this, we just need to use our mechanism blocks from our uh, from the template from Moodle and we're going to copy over the beam model. We place the beam model, copy and paste that over and what we, all you have to do to actually then make a reference and how they, to join them up is by simply clicking and dragging and joining the two uh, inputs together. So this is saying that this point mass is on the right side or the one at this end of the beam. What we can also do is right click on these and rotate and flip them to orientate our inputs and outputs just for uh, to make it a bit neater on our diagram. Now we want to just edit this beam and give it some dimensions. So they'll always, if you copy from the template folder, they'll always start with 0000. zero, zero, zero. So you'll need to add some dimensions to these. So we're going to have a length of 20 centimeters. We're going to give it a width of zero, uh, one centimeter, a height of one centimeter. We're going to have it massless, so a density of zero. And we also have a color, so when you start creating more complex models, you can use RGB codes to represent different parts of your mechanism. You just have to click apply and OK. And again, we can just edit this and say beam of a length of 20 centimeters to represent what that, be, uh, what that beam is. So now we've got a beam with a point mass on the end of it, but it still has no reference to our origin. And we want it actually to hang off our origin here. Okay, so we're gonna use that world frame as our swinging point. So to do that, we'll get our mechanism blocked up again. And we will select the revolute joint so this allows us to have two items connected to one another and the freedom to rotate. So we just need to copy and paste that over across. And what we need to do is give it the base reference point and what they call the follower, which is the uh, other point across on the other side of the joint. And it's a simple case of just joining these two to the two uh, reference points. So we're going to use the left side of the beam and we're going to reference it to our, z our origin, which all these lines represent. They all join together and are part of the origin. So we can actually just 
line all this up quite neatly, and now we have a beam connected to the origin with a point mass at the end. To visualise what we've actually generated, we can go to diagram, uh, simulation site, and update diagram. If we do this, what we will see is first of all we need to change the view convention to Y is up because we're using Y as our um, reference point for gravity. Um, we just click this side of the face and if we zoom out, all we see here that's it, Oops, zoom out and move it across. All we have here is our ma uh, massless beam point mass at the horizontal with um, the y direction. So actually if we decided to run this, so if we just go so run the simulation we just have to click uh, this button for run. So we just do that. And what we can see is that our mass is starting to rotate through time. There we go, so just get that centre for us. So we just keep run and it's now moving up and down uh, against gravity. There we go. So um, in your mechanism designs, you'll probably want to actually position at a specific point. You'll have a specific angle that your uh, beams will be set at for it to unfold and um, retract and deploy. So we can actually set the angle, the desired angle for the joint, uh, in the block itself. So we just double click the block, we set the state targets and we can give it a position and we'll set this one to 50 degrees, uh, just for an example. So we click apply, click OK, and again if we update this diagram, go to simulation update diagram, we'll see now that our pendulum now is starting at 50 uh, degrees against the horizontal. Now what we need to do is simply click uh, run and we can then see now the simulation will resol resolve itself with the new position and there it goes. And it's taking 0 0.01 time, step, time steps through this simulation. But now we've got it moving, we've got it all connected up, but actually what we're interested in and we're really interested in is the values of like speed, acceleration, displacement over time. We want to be able to get those out so we can plot those and then when we vary the parameters such as the mass or beam lengths um, or for yourselves it will be the gear ratios and um, maybe potentially uh, damping levels uh, to see how those mechanisms will deploy and how they, the damping and gear ratios affect the time to deploy. So to get those kind of values out of your model we can actually go back to our joint and look at sensing. So if we click the sensing tab We've got position, velocity, and acceleration, and actuator to talk that we can actually output. So in this case, we'll just select, we can select them all, and it'll create multiple tabs off our joint, or just for simplicity in this demo, we'll just pick a single one, and we'll go for position. And if we click apply, we can see it actually adds a new output from our joint. If we decide to add velocity, just appends another output. But for simplicity, we'll keep just to a, um, the position. So now we've got the position for our joint. And we can move these up. We can then actually take this and put it into our MATLAB, uh, our MATLAB workspace. To do this, we'll go back to our mechanism blocks. And what we need is our PS to Simulink converter. It just converts the signal for MATLAB and we join that to the queue which is our displacement or our position and what we want to use is the sim out to workspace. So if we do the sim out to workspace what we're doing is taking that signal from Simulink and going to put it out as, as a variable called sim out in our workspace in MATLAB. So if we decide to run this again, it will run the simulation through time. So we still get the same motion. 
And all we're doing is actually extracting that work, um, that position out into our workspace. So now it's created sim out. We just need to double click this. Um, what we get is a time series variable or array where we've got time on the left and then we have data on the right. So our data one here is going to be our position. And if we were going to plot that, all we have to, have to do is put plot in our command window sim out dot time brackets all of column one. So that's our time variable here. And sim out dot time oh so dot data all of column one and click plot. And there we have it. So now that's our plot of displacement in radians over time. Okay, so that's what uh, Simulink always works in your standard units. Okay, so that's it. So if we want to actually generate some more data and we want to output some more data, we can click on that revolute joint again. And we can go back to sensing. Let's say we want the velocity and acceleration as well. We click apply and add those to it. We can then uh, we just need to remove this for a second and we're going to create a couple more copies of these converters and we just need to join those up to our speed and acceleration what we need to do now is then we want to join all these and they are all going to be part of the sim out variable to do this, we just need the mechanism blocks again, uh, templates. We're going to use this block here called the MUX. And if we double click this, we can give it three inputs. And if we place that between here, we're going to basically combine all these and they're going to be effectively di three different columns in our sim out um, result. So that means that in that sim out, we're going to have velocity, uh, displacement velocity and acceleration. We click run again. We'll let it solve the uh, problem once more. And if we click pause that and double click the sim out, as you can see, we've now added two more data streams, which are our velocity and acceleration. And again, now you can plot those and investigate how changing the mass or the beam lengths will affect the uh, velocities, displacements and accelerations of the joint. So there we have it, that's our quick demo of doing a basic pendulum if, um, in Simulink. Next, stage, next tutorial will be giving a demo of how we would fix that in position. So we're going to provide a feedback loop in our pendulum model to actually fix it into position so it does not move um, when we actually try and run the simulation. Okay, thank you very much.